So how's the how's the week been for you? Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Been a good time. Uh, just sitting over there, kind of as, as Terry was teaching, uh, just started to get this sense that we've heard from apostles this week. Uh, we've heard from prophets uh, here in Dana and from Nick. Uh, we've heard from evangelists here in Gear up here. I know he says that he is. Um, what did he say? Rubbish. As a, uh, a traditional evangelist, but you could see just the, the gentleness, the broken heart for the lost, the passion. Uh, we've heard from pastors, and we've heard from teachers. Brad was here just uh, parsing for us the, the, the beautiful spirit of God. Um, it's for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, and for the building up of the body of Christ. And uh, I hope that you're walking out of here feeling equipped and built up. Uh, that's the purpose of the gifts, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, is to equip and to build up. Mm -hmm. And I, I would want that to be the outcome of a time like this. Yeah. Is yeah. that you would walk out of here equipped and encouraged and built up and ready for what lies ahead. Mm -hmm. And that's a, uh, that, that's a, an important part of um, why we gather. Uh, we don't just we don't do this for our own purposes. Uh, there's no there's no financial profit in it. Whatever money has come in has gone directly to uh, the camp and to the snaps. Like that's it. You know, it's just that's that's all there is. <laughs> there's no uh, you know none of the teachers have taken any kind of uh, uh, honorarium or anything like that. There's just none of that. It's just for the benefit of the body of Christ to equip the saints for the work of ministry and to build up the body of Christ. And so I hope that's been your experience. Um, uh, so yeah, first when, when Paul writes to Timothy in, in 2 Timothy 1.6 and he says to fan the flame the gift that is in you from the laying on of my hands, what, what would you say is that gift? Is this a trick question? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I just want to know how you would, how you would read that, that gift. I think it's the empowerment to do the assignment God has given him. And it's a, in a sense, he's saying that your gift. Yeah. I want you to fan into flame your gift that is in you, that God has given you. Yeah. And it was affirmed by the laying on of Paul's hands, but it's the gift of God. Yeah. Uh, would you believe that each person has that, that gift of God, that assignment on their life? Would you believe? Absolutely. So you read first, 2 Timothy 1.6. And Paul's instruction to Timothy to fan into flame the gift that is in you uh, in the laying on of my hands. There is a, uh, an invitation to each one of us uh, to examine the gift that um, God has given us, uh, the assignment. I think it's a, it's a great way to phrase that. The assignment that is on us uh, that either has been or will be affirmed by those around us uh, some of us are, are still in the early days of life and ministry, and that, that gift is yet to be affirmed, yet to be uh, commissioned, um, but it's, it's forming. And, and Paul asks Timothy to fan it into flame. Uh, that, that picture is so vivid. We were sitting by the fire last night. It was pretty lit for us. We didn't have to work it, but uh, you've, you've lit a campfire before, everybody. Have you built a fire at some point? Uh, I love the cheater logs. I just buy those Dura flames and just put those at the bottom of my, uh, of my wood pile, and then it looks like I built a great fire. But the actual work of building a campfire without the cheater log or WD-40 or lighter fluid or whatever is a challenging thing. But it's a... <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a, uh, it's Paul calling on Timothy to participate in building up his assignment. Um, fan it into flame, Timothy. This thing's not going to build itself. You have a part to play in this, and also that assignment is meant to grow. That assignment is meant to get bigger. The flame is not supposed to stay in infancy. It's not supposed to, to stay as just a, a small spark, a burning ember, an initial idea. That, that, that flame that is in you, that assignment that is in you, is not meant to stay small. It's meant to grow over the course of your life. And you have a part to play in that, to fan it into flame. So Paul, at the end of his life, challenges Timothy, that thing, that, that assignment, let it grow and grow. It 
there's more to your story than what is there right now. And I, I guess I'll just ask you this. Whatever your son, whatever your gift, whatever God has put in you with your life, the question that Terry asked at the very end, if you have all power, all authority, what would you do? With that beautiful silence where he just hands me the microphone and saying, well, duh, all authority in heaven and earth, on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and carry my name, carry my authority, carry my power. So whatever that assignment is that's in you, it's meant to grow. And you need to fan that into flame, you need to participate in it. Well, Paul, challenging his young, timid friend, in fact, actually, it's worth going there, go to 2 Timothy 1, 6 and 7. He says to Timothy, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And then he, he carries on in verse 7 and says, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, of love, and self-control. So here we have Paul telling Timothy to let this flame grow, to grow this flame, this assignment, this gift that is in you, to grow it to greater capacity, to greater fire, to greater flame. I want you to stoke that thing. Why can you do that, Timothy? Why is it that you can grow the gift that is in you? It's because the spirit that is in you is great. The spirit that is in you is not intimidated. The spirit that is in you is not afraid, but it is full of power, of love, and self-control. So we're going to talk about those Three character qualities of the spirit. I'm not going to take long. We're going to have, we're going to wrap up our time, but I want I want to send you away with um, a sense of assignment, a sense of the future, a sense of what God is doing. So let's talk about this spirit that is in us. First of all, God gave us a spirit, and it's a spirit not of fear. So when you think of the spirit of God that's in you. That spirit is not going to be led by fear. It's not going to be intimidated by fear. Uh, I, I love the idea that the, the Holy Spirit is the perfect theologian. He knows the atonement better than any writer that has ever written anything on the atonement. He knows the scriptures better than Wayne Grudem knows the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is so brilliant and so smart and so aware of the accomplished work of Jesus Christ. He is flawless in his theology. So when he approaches the darkness, when he approaches the enemy, when he approaches the lost, when he approaches the mission, he's not intimidated by any of that because he knows that victory has been won. He knows the blood that has been poured out for the forgiveness of sins. He can apply all doctrine to any situation and is fearless of the world that is out there because he is fully aware what Jesus has accomplished. And he is pointing us to Jesus, saying you have no reason to be afraid. This is not a spirit of fear. That's not who is in us. That's not who God has given us. It's not a spirit of fear. But it is a spirit. Paul goes so far as to actually give uh, character qualities to the spirit of God. It's a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of self-control or self-discipline. Uh, this is from N.T. Wright talking about power. He says, people are suspicious of power, quite rightly. We've all heard the famous saying that power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Power can be bad for those who exercise it as much, if not more, as for those over whom it is, it is exercised. And yet power is inevitable and necessary within human relationships. Listen to this part. Someone has to make decisions. Someone has to protect the weak and vulnerable. Someone has to regulate the common life of a complex society. Someone has to give other people a sense of direction. This is just as true in the church as it is in the world around. We are not solitary individuals living out our lives in detached isolation. Anarchy doesn't enable people to flourish either as humans or as Christians. The New Testament insists that God intends human authorities to bring order and harmony to the world. We have a spirit of power, not for our own benefit, not for uh, the ability to lord over others, but there is a spirit of power that has been put on us to lead, to guide, to direct, to bring voice, to bring authority. I want you to think of the churches that you're in 
What if no one had stepped out and said, I believe the Lord is calling me to start a new work in this city? Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of those weird spaces where we trust the sovereignty of God and that there are others that he could have called on, others that he could have worked through, others that he could have done, but, but he, he pointed to you. He shone a spotlight on you and asked you to step out and gave you a spirit of power to bring a voice, to bring a leadership, to bring an authority, to call people together and say, this church needs more. This city needs more. This area needs more. We need to rally. We need to bring the gospel. We need to preach the name of Jesus. This place needs more of him. Give us a spirit of power. And I continue with N.T. Wright because he really helped me out on this one. He says, this power is mysterious. It isn't simply a matter of holding a particular office on the one hand or of having a forceful personality on the other. By themselves, both of those can become dangerous. It's a matter of having the ability to do and say things which can change situations, to give a lead which others find that they want to follow, to speak words of wisdom which prove compelling, and to bring healing and hope where it's most needed. This idea of the spirit of power is not, it's not a power for our benefit. Like what we've talked about even with this time, it's for the equipping of the saints, for the building up of the body of Christ, for pointing people to Jesus, for stirring one another to love and good works, to activate the body of Christ to greater Jesus presence in our lives. It's a power to draw people into the story of God in deeper and greater ways. We have a spirit of power, and that power is vast and great. We have been given a spirit of power and a spirit of love. One more from N.T. Wright, because again, very, very helpful. Power divorced from love quickly becomes destructive, if not even demonic. Or it's okay to say demonic, because N.T. Wright says demonic. For its first couple of sermons that he gave at Anthem, there were lots of demonic things in the world. He was very insistent on it. Was in the text. It was in the text. <laughs> This, this power, if it's not completely and totally paired with the spirit of love, will go awry very quickly. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we've seen a lot of them. There are so many stories. I, I just look at, at our generation, the, the last three decades, and I'm sure the three decades before that, there were plenty of stories of uh, leaders falling and churches imploding and uh, denominations shriveling up from poor leadership, whatever. That, that story has been around, but we've seen it very clearly. Maybe it's thanks to social media and, and easy access to the news or whatever, but these last three decades, it's been everywhere, all the time. And you start to see power divorced from love, and it becomes a very corrupted moment. And that spirit of power can become demonic very quickly when it's not paired with the spirit of love. And so you have power that this spirit brings to us, but he also brings this love. When we're walking by the spirit, we will walk in his power. When we're walking by the spirit, we will also walk in his love. I love how Gare talked about that. That love that we have for the lost. That is produced in When we're walking by the spirit, he will break our hearts for the lost. He will uh, give us the heart of God for people that do not yet know him. The Macedonian call. So we have a spirit of power, we have a spirit of love, and we have a spirit of self-control or self-discipline. I love that that one is thrown in there. The Holy Spirit has given us power and love. Both have very outward components to them, their leadership, their pastoring, their, uh, their foundation laying, they're important for carrying things and bringing them together and calling people to a greater story, fan into flame. The Spirit has given you power and love, but He's also given you self-control, self-discipline. He's actually here to not only shape those things, but He's also here to shape you. Yeah. He's also here to grow your ability to walk in greater and greater purity, mm -hmm. greater and greater holiness, greater and greater discipline to, to walk in the things of Jesus, uh, to practice the way of Jesus, to study the scriptures, to pray diligently. 
Uh, Chris just turned 60 this year, I turned 40 next year, uh, so he's, he's 21 close. years older than I am. Yeah, we're very close, like brothers from another mom. Uh, I look at Chris's prayer life, and I see my own prayer life, and I see a gap, and I think to myself, I've got 21 years to catch up to that man. I've got time that I have to grow to, I, he inspires me to pray differently than where I'm praying now. And I have in me a spirit of self-control to grow that, to discipline myself to greater and greater prayer. It's important that we see that there's more. I don't know if you realize this, and to find the gift that is in you, because there's more than there is right now. Have self-control and self-discipline because there's, there's more to you than exists right now. God has so much more than you are already living out in this moment. How refreshing is it to know that you have not yet arrived at your peak? It's so critical. Uh, Nick, how long have you lived? 19 years. 19 years at every point. Do you feel done? <laughs> Not a trick question. You feel fine. Do you feel fine? Uh, do you feel like God is okay? You feel good. You feel good. How does it feel to know that God has so much more to develop in you even still? The great thought, and it's a good thought, and it's it. I need to discipline myself to accept it. Yeah. I look at guys that are on the tail end of uh, life and ministry, and I'm kind of wondering what's next. I watched my dad, who was here for Tuesday and Wednesday, finish up his time 34 years in one church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, instead of just picking up the golf clubs and uh, kind of living off of uh, the, uh, the whatever he'd saved up, he starts looking for new opportunities and new ways. And now we watch my parents go into Nepal, into Sri Lanka, into Hong Kong, into China, into Ethiopia, into Guatemala, and Colombia, wherever there are people. Uh, that, that needs something added to their story. My dad raises his hand, and he has people that are paying his plane tickets, just faithful people that he pastored for 34 years and said, we got you covered. And he goes into those places and he ministers uh, until he's uh, nearly on his deathbed. He came home from Nepal, just flat sick. He was so long. I thought he was dying. <laughs> What he shared with me is that in the, in the last five years, since he stepped leading the church that he was in, uh, that God has taught him more about his spirit, more about obedience, more about the scriptures, uh, more about the, the needs that exist in the world than he ever saw in the 34 years of leading the church. I love the picture of a 60, he was born in 1950, so uh, he just turned 68 years old, feeling fresh to be developed into even more. Great mm -hmm. story. Steve Larson, fan into flame, the gift that is in you, hang on. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just want, want to walk out of here with each one of us, from the youngest, who's the youngest in the room? Uh, yeah. Oh. Levi. Yeah. Levi, where's the guy? All right, Levi. 16? 18. 18. All right, you look 16. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, 18 years old. From our 18 year old brother to, you might be the oldest in the room. All right, 18, 16. Wow. wow. You should call my dad back, have him get in here. Just, yeah. to, be, just to be a few years old. Uh, Terry is the same as being a few months. So close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a young man. He's old. <laughs> So we have 18 to 60, and I don't believe the message from Paul to Timothy changes at the end of your life. Yeah. Amen. So wherever you are, 
know that you have a spirit of power, of love, and of self-control that is shaping an even greater story in you than exists right now. Yeah. 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 Jesus, what a sweet time this has been. For so many coming in, uh, I, I even even just after starting the time with the, the snowboarding picture, having people share with me using that metaphor where they are in their journey it was so it was so sweet just to hear the different. Yeah, I'm flying. I'm flying down the hill right now. I'm rejoicing. I'm so excited about where we're at. All the way to I am thrashed and tumbled and hurting and exhausted. Mm -hmm. and Jesus, you have met us here. The idea of uh, you ministering to us has been so tangible. Even as Chris brought up that we haven't spent a lot of time praying for each other, yet the ministry has been so profound. I love that you minister in so many different ways. Yes. It isn't always a direct prayer, a, a specific word for each and every one of us. Sometimes it's drawing us together as, as one, as a, a brotherhood, as a family, and saying, bless you, I bless this. My hand is here, my heart is here, and I want to fill this place with my presence so that you are encouraged and built up and equipped for even more. You did that, Jesus. You gave that gift to us. Thank you for your generosity to us, your grace to us. Jesus, I just want to take a moment and pray for uh, the assignments in this room. <coughs> the well-developed assignments all the way down to the to yet-to-be-developed assignments. Jesus, you are um, putting something in each one of us to carry your name into this world, into the nations, into uh, the neighborhoods. Uh, for your name, for your kingdom, you are calling us to go and carry out the things of, uh, of your purpose, your mission. And then you give us a spirit of power, of love, and of self-control uh, to do this and to do it well. Jesus, you have not left us, you have not forsaken us, you are with us to the very end of the age, your Holy Spirit is in us, he fills us up to overflowing, he is with us, he is alongside us, he ministers to us, and he empowers us, this is such a gift. As we get ready to go, Jesus, I just pray that you would uh, send us out of here ready for what's ahead. Yeah. Empowered to do what you've asked of us. Equipped to do more. Lord, I think of Gare. It just felt like an equipping time. It felt like I didn't know things and now I know them. And I feel like genuinely equipped to do more for your kingdom. Because Gare was you. That's such a, such a sweet thing. Thank you for that. So I just pray for the many things that are happening in many places and that they would be done. Uh, it's a great effectiveness uh, in your name, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us together for this time. But you bless the travel as we go from here, the, uh, even the conversations that are going to continue, uh, the ministry that's going to happen this weekend on our on our Sundays for the Fridays back in Dubai. We pray, Lord, over Rack and over uh, Love of Life in Dubai. We pray that just, just great, great ministry to take place in the places this week. Lord, that there just be such a freshness to what you're bringing to us. Thank you. We love you, Jesus. Yeah. You are our treasure. More than ministry, more than our churches, more than our gifts, more than our calling. You are our treasure. You are our pearl. Yes, you are. To you that we love, to you that we pray, to you that we worship.
Thank you.